Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Sketch Monkey here. I'm back at McDonald Mazda in Denver to have a look at something pretty sweet today. And this is the 2023 Mazda Miata MX-5 RF. RF meaning that it is actually a hardtop. And I like this design because I think it looks just as good with the roof down that it does with the roof up. So what we're gonna do in this video is of course have a look at this front end with the uh, the current Miata face. Is it friendly enough? I think that's the big question here. We're gonna have a look at the side view, the rear and the interior. Then we're gonna take it for a drive. Let's have a look at some of the basic spec and tech of the 2023 Mazda Miata MX-5 RF. You have a 2-liter 4-cylinder putting out 181 horsepower, 151 pound-feet of torque. It's connected to a 6-speed manual transmission. All that power is sent to the rear wheels and 0-6 to six is done in 5.8 seconds. Fuel economy sits as 26 city, 34 highway and the pricing for this one is $38,000. So it's hard to believe that Mazda has sold over a million MX-5 since it was first introduced and this is the latest generation obviously. I think it got a little bit more aggressive in the front end but it still has this smiley face and this smiley face needs to be intact on every single Miata in my opinion. It does have this front face that says it's ready to go and do some fun back roads with the pretty aggressive headlights in this area and a nice chamfer going around it. Actually two chamfers. You have one chamfer going down here, another chamfer connecting to the corner of the grille. Very beautifully done and this is the club spec meaning that we do have an additional black splitter at the bottom which hugs the road and I think it looks so good to have these black uh, additional pieces onto this pearl white metallic that we have on this car. What Mazda does so well these days is the implementation of very soft harmonious surfacing with a couple of sharp lines integrated in it. For example, have a look at this line that we have going in the hood that then fades right before it meets the front end. We do still have the chrome badge in the middle. I'm not, I'm not sure about the chrome here on this uh, club trim because everything else is blacked out so I kind of want to have the front end logo also blacked out in this case. We do have LED headlights here with the uh, regular light bulb for the indicators so no LED indicators in this case because this design came out in 2016 so it is a pretty old design and it's pretty much time for a new one anytime now. As I said I love the sculpting that Mazda is doing in their mo uh, models right now with this Kodo design philosophy and that happens here as well. I think from this angle you're looking at the car from right now you can see this big beautiful sculpted front fenders it angles outwards and then you have this chamfer going around the wheels very beautifully done and down here you actually do have the fog lights. They could have added some fake vents here but I'm glad they didn't and instead added a functional piece which are the lights at the bottom. Coming around to the side view of the MX-5 RF and this is where it clearly is a little bit different than the uh, uh, Roadster version with this big piece right here. And as you can see I actually think this car looks better with the roof up in a coupe shape because we don't have this abrupt cut right here in the roof line when the roof is down. However, you do get that uh, top-down experience in this Targa version and it still looks pretty decent with the roof down like we have it right now. Now this being the club version, I actually really like the spec that we have going on here. We have 17-inch forged BBS wheels with 205 width on the tire, both front and rear. And this being a rear-wheel drive car, I definitely want to uh, add some width to the rear tires but the design itself with this black finish this is also one of these cars here I think black wheels actually suit this car overall because we have the black side mirrors as well and the black side skirt that is part of the club trim and in addition we also have a Brembo brakes for the club trim. Very cool setup and as I said it contrasts really well with the pearl white and having all of these black features all over the car. Now I want to zoom in on this area of the RF uh, MX-5 because I think this is probably my favorite view of or a surface on this car. The reason being look at this subtle shoulder line here. Now Mazda is not really happy about adding shoulder lines onto their cars because of this Kodo design language that they have going on right now which I think is fantastic it looks great but since this is a rear wheel drive car we do want to have some sort of indication of that in the body lines and we do have that 
with this subtle shoulder. And you can see just how beautifully sculpted this is, specifically in white. I hope you can see it in the sunshine. It just looks absolutely fantastic in this area. Coming around to the rear end of the MX-5 RF down here, you can see just how beautifully sculpted this surface is as well. Very subtle angle on this one or curvature and big chamfer up here with the black club spoiler contrasting well with this uh, pearl white. You have the LED taillights right here with some old school indicator light. I do think this shape works because look at this uh, round circle here. It looks like it's been pushed in to the bumper itself and carved out this section. Beautifully done. I love when they have housings for the key graphics like we have here. Now, when this came out in 2016, it wasn't any rules saying that you need to have a backup camera on every single new car, but that changed during the lifespan of this car. So what did Mazda do to solve this problem? They integrated the camera right here. At least it has a bit of a housing, a bit of a chamfer to it down here, but that's pretty much it. It still looks a bit out of place just in the center of the bumper. I wish they could have moved this down to house it underneath this shelf here above the uh, license plate or something like that to make it feel a bit more hidden than it is right now. But since they had to do it, I guess this was the simplest way to getting that job done. Now, looking at the uh, MX-5 RF from a straight rear view, like you're looking at it from right now, you can clearly see the beautiful sculpting of these rear fenders and how they bulge out with this shoulder line that we talked about. And this also means that I, I want even more to have a wider rear tire here because this is a 205 tire in the rear on a rear wheel drive car. It's gonna be a lot of fun in the corners because you're not gonna have a lot of traction with a bicycle tire like that. But I still wanna add a little bit of width to this to plant it more naturally looking at it from a rear view and have it in line with the bodywork that we have here. One detail that I love that they did here, which, which is very similar to what's going on in the front end, is that the reverse lights are, in, are located right here at the bottom, similar to what we have the fog lights in the front. So we had, do have some connection to the lighting design and the graphic in the front in the rear here as well, with the uh, reverse light being positioned right here with this nice chamfer housing for it. Now, if we look down low right here in this area, we have the blacked out diffuser that goes along with the rest of the club trim. For this specific MX-5, you also have dual exhaust, but just on one side. So it's located on the uh, passenger side. And this is something that I would not want to redesign in this case, because Japanese cars, to me, they, they feel natural to have the exhaust being on just one side, like we have here. I would not want to duplicate this and make it into a quad exhaust, because it, it just would feel sort of wrong to have quad exhaust on an MX-5. Welcome to the interior of the 2023 Mazda Miata RF. And it is extremely cozy in here. I love what's going on here. I put the roof off because it's so hot. I'm sweating like crazy. So the AC is on. Let's turn it down to um, cold, obviously. And let's have the air blowing from these vents as well as my feet. Very easy to adjust there, as you see. This is the first time I'm jumping into this uh, generation uh, Miata. I don't think I've been in one actually since it came out in 2016 which is pretty nuts to think about but very easy to adjust these vents because they're so big and they have all the graphics on there showing you exactly what they do one detail here with the vents is that these vents here reminds me a lot of the taillights you have the round circular big vent here going into a more horizontal vent with the same outline like we have in the taillights so it feels like Maybe the interior and exterior designers at Mazda had a lunch break together and said, let's do something fun to connect the exterior graphics with the interior. I really like that. Up here, we do have a small, tiny little seven inch touchscreen. At least it is touchscreen because in a lot of Miatas, you don't even have touchscreen. You have to use this dial, which you can do here as well. Not problematic at all to use the dial. It's very easy to, to, to figure this one out and it's very intuitive. For, for example, going back, you just push the dial to the back arrow and it switches to the previous page instead of having to push a, a specific back button that a lot of other manufacturers has. It looks pretty cool. You do have some settings in here. Let's see what we got when we put into settings. You have the display settings, the system, the brightness, contrast and stuff like this. Very cool stuff, but it's probably not something that I would uh, be in and use too much these type of things. I would just 
set it once and keep the same settings. Looking at the integration of this, yes, it does have this iPad stuck on the dash feel to it, but it, at least it has some sort of base where it's sitting inside of. Moving on further down here, we talked about the, uh, the vents here being very similar to the taillights. We also talked about the climate control settings in the middle looking pretty sweet. Here you have the button for the roof. If you wanna bring that up and down, you have this toggle to just hold it down to bring it down or hold it up to bring it back up. You also have heated seats in three different levels and a couple of USB ports. Moving further along in the center console, this has to be the shortest shifter shift knob I've ever seen in my life but this I just drove the Mazda 3 um, with, with a manual and this gearbox for some reason just feels so much tighter than the one in the Mazda 3 can't wait to take this out on a quick drive and see how this feels on the road you do have a proper old-school e-brake right here the controls for the uh, infotainment screen the toggle one the the uh, knob is right here so you can use that with a couple of additional buttons for example for the volume control for the radio and moving further back you do have this very tiny armrest storage uh, not big at all you might fit maybe two markers with a couple of big pens in there as well and back here we do have cup holders so you have to kind of reach them like this and these are also if you don't want them here you can just put them take them off and remove them like this it feels like you're breaking stuff in here but that's actually how they were designed if the armrest storage is not enough for you you still have a lockable uh, storage back here which is a lot bigger than the one you have in the armrest moving on to the gauge cluster I like what's going on here because we have a combination of a very traditional layout for the gauges with the big tachometer in the middle exactly like you want in a sports car that would be the most important dial for you to look at when you're driving this you have a pretty large uh, speedometer analog to the right side and to the left you do have a digital display so you do have a nice setup here and also the housing for it feels pretty nice it is hard plastic up here but i don't care i'm never going to touch that anyway you do have soft touch materials where you're actually going to have your elbows so that's a good feature down here it looks like you have some carbon fiber in the door I'm not sure if this is real carbon fiber or if it's just uh, for decoration. The steering wheel feels exactly like it did in the Mazda 3. I believe this is this maybe the same steering wheel. I feel like the center is maybe a little bigger. You have the controls for the cruise control on the right side, the uh, voice control settings and the uh, stereo set radio settings on the left side. And you have the silver trim going down in the bottom as well with some contrast stitching on the steering wheel the same contrast stitching that we have on the seats and these seats are proper recaro seats i do love the design of these seats it looks so much better than the ones it look they look more interesting than the ones we had in the mazda 3 very sporty design i do like that it says recaro on the backrest and you have this alcantara feel in the middle of it last but not least we don't have any sort of glove box in the mx5 i think this is the first car where if i have my hand up top on the steering wheel i can actually actually reach out to the windshield in front of me that's how close the windshield is to the driver and how, how small this car actually is shutting off in the 2023 Mazda Miata RF Club I do love this spec that we have here because of the white I also like that the white extends from the hood going into the door and uh, having the same color inside here in some way that we have in the exterior very nice little almost Italian style so there are a lot of road work going on here but that gives us a chance to feel out this suspension and this is not the smoothest roads in all of Denver and it is a bit noisy in here but again I think that's what I expect from a Miata I don't expect it to be a uh, you know super luxurious grand crew uh, grand tourer because that's not what this is this is a small little fun uh, sports car and it doesn't weigh a lot either it makes it feel like a more interesting driving experience when you hear all the noises coming from the road and through you feel them through the wheel as well me being 6-1 in here it's definitely I'm gonna use the word cozy in here because that's exactly what it is so this six-speed manual the, the engine sounds fantastic when you're revving it and it feels alive this two liter with only 181 horsepower but it still feels like a very very fun car to drive
definitely goes. It's not the quickest car for sure. Uh, you know, 181 horsepower is not, it doesn't matter how light the car is, it's not gonna feel super quick. But I do like that the revs build up uh, very smoothly over the, uh, the rev range, and I really like that about this car. There is no turbo lag or, or uh, anything like that. Turning radius is also absolutely fantastic, no problems whatsoever turning this car into whatever small little space you can find. Overall, very fun car to drive, and I do love that Mazda has still kept that the original uh, feel for what a Miata is supposed to be. This doesn't weigh a lot more than the original Miatas, for example, and it still feels like a very light car. There's no extra luxuries in here that you don't need. And let's have a look at the reverse camera. It looks pretty grainy, but again, it doesn't matter because it's such a fun car to drive this thing and you don't really care about this uh, reverse camera that they had to put in uh, once it became mandatory for new vehicles to have that. Thanks again to uh, McDonald Mazda here in Denver for providing this vehicle for me to review for you guys today. If you're interested in this specific Miata or their entire inventory here, make sure you click the link in the description to go and check that out. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.